hello everyone uh, this is the second class of chemistry so in the previous class uh, we talked about the introduction of haloalkenes we discussed the classification preparation of haloalkenes okay now today in this class we shall be dealing with the properties of haloalkenes and uh, by property we mean the physical property and chemical property okay so the physical properties of haloalkenes and the chemical properties of haloalkenes okay okay first of all let's discuss the physical properties of haloalkenes so physical properties now under the physical properties what comes are the physical state of any substance the solubility the melting point the boiling point the density color etc okay now first of all let's talk about the physical state of haloalkenes okay now the physical state of any compound in fact it entirely depends upon the intermolecular attraction that they exist between the molecules of that compound okay so intermolecular attraction is what decides whether a compound exists in solid state liquid state or in gaseous state now if we talk about haloalkenes even in case of haloalkenes we should consider we should first have a close look at the intermolecular force that is existing between the molecules now let's suppose this is a solid now we already know that in solid the molecules or the particles are very close to each other so therefore the intermolecular bonding or the intermolecular force is the strongest in case of solid now this intermolecular force in case of gas if we consider gas any gas let's say this is some gas carbon dioxide gas okay now what happens in case of a gas the molecules are located far away from each other so we can say that there is almost no any intermolecular force existing between the molecules okay so because of this the molecule can move randomly all over in all directions okay so if the intermolecular force is very strong the compound exists in solid state on the other hand if the intermolecular force is like very weak or almost negligible the compound exists in gaseous state now in between these two let's say there is some appreciable or intermediate intermolecular force okay so if there is some appreciable intermolecular force neither very strong nor very weak the compound may exist in liquid state so let's say these are liquid molecule so the intermolecular force exist in solid and in liquid but there is almost no any intermolecular force in case of gas okay now let's talk about the haloalkane molecules okay first of all i'll take examples of methyl halides now methyl halide that is ch3f ch3cl ch3br then we have ch3i okay next thing about the physical state of a compound is that we also need to see the molecular mass because the physical uh, because the intermolecular force actually depends upon the molecular mass of any compound as the molecular mass increases we have learned already in class 11 as the molecular mass increases the van der waal attractive force also increases okay so if we see the molecular mass of all these methyl halides it's in this order right methyl fluoride to methyl iodide intermolecular force will be in this order why because molecular mass increases the intermolecular attractive force also increases so highest intermolecular attraction will be in this case ch3i which is why ch3i or methyl iodide is liquid at room temperature so this is a liquid and the rest of these three methyl halides are gases at room temperature so these three are gas only the uh, methyl iodide is a liquid at room temperature okay so this is all about methyl halide next we'll see for the same halogen atom let's say there is a, a same halogen atom in case of haloalkane and the difference is in the number of carbon atom now basically what happens is as the number of carbon atom increases the molecular mass increases so let's take this example ch3cl then ch3ch2cl methyl chloride and this is ethyl chloride the molecular mass of ethyl chloride is obviously greater than the than this one methyl chloride okay so because of greater molecular mass there is a stronger molecular intermolecular force in ethyl chloride so therefore ethyl chloride exist in liquid state this is liquid at room temperature and this is again a gas 
okay so this is physical state so in which physical state a compound exists is entirely decided by the intermolecular force of attraction existing between the molecules okay now next uh, let's uh, uh, talk about the stability now by stability we mean the temperature the haloalkane molecule can withstand or can resist okay now if we look at the stability we have already learned that there is one cx bond in all the haloalkane molecule so it is that strength of this cx bond that will decide the stability of any haloalkane molecule now in fluoride there is a cf bond ccl bond in chloride cbr bond in bromide and the ci bond in iodide if we compare the bond distance or the bond length in all these four methyl halides uh, i mean alkyl halides the ci bond length is the longest now if a bond is longer it will be weaker if a bond is shorter it will be stronger okay so this is the strongest bond and ci bond will be the weakest bond so because of this weak ci bond all the alkyl iodide molecule easily break into smaller spaces okay because this ci bond gets broken for example let's take this example this is ch3i now methyl iodide when it is exposed to sunlight it will break into ch3 ch3 plus i2 so therefore some violet fumes comes out of the methyl iodide molecule when it is exposed to sunlight why because this ci bond gets broken okay and because ci bond is breaking i2 molecule i2 molecule will release so therefore the whole molecule releases some violet fumes okay cf bond being the strongest the methyl fluorides or any alkyl fluoride will be the most stable and the least stable will be the alkyl iodide okay the fluorides will be the most stable then chloride bromide the least stable is the iodide okay so this is all about stability okay now let's talk about the melting point and boiling point of haloalkanes okay now as i said earlier that the physical state entirely depends upon the intermolecular attractive force existing between the molecules now even the melting point and boiling point depends upon the intermolecular attraction now what is the melting point and boiling point of any substance it is that temperature at which a solid melts or at which a liquid boils okay so let's talk about the melting point first now any solid will have a higher melting point when the intermolecular force is stronger okay it will have a lower melting point when the intermolecular force is weaker now if we talk about methyl halides again methyl halide the intermolecular force is in this order ch3cl ch3br then ch3i so as the intermolecular force follows this order the boiling point and also the melting point will follow the same order so therefore ch3i will have the highest melting point or the boiling point and ch3f the lowest melting point and boiling point now again for the same halogen atom as the number of carbon atom increases the molecular mass increases the intermolecular force again increases and it will ultimately increase the melting point and boiling point of the haloalkanes okay now let's take a haloalkane now what happens let's take this example ch3 ch2 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 br okay now this is iodo sorry bromopentin okay bromopentin now this is n bromopentin why because this is a straight chain carbon carbon straight chain this has a carbon carbon straight chain now as the carbon carbon chain goes on branching see so this one now this has the same number of carbon atom it also has five carbon atoms okay this also has five carbon atoms now this uh, the iupac name will be different this is different compound and this is different compound now between these two 
molecules, alkyl bromides, both these are alkyl bromides, this one will have some elongated type of shape, linear shape, and this will have a spherical type of shape, okay? So therefore, what happens is, between the linear elongated molecule and spherical molecule, there is stronger attraction, intermolecular attraction between this molecule. So therefore, this will have stronger intermolecular attraction and this will have weaker intermolecular attraction. Actually, the intermolecular attraction depends upon the surface area also, okay? Now, this has a greater surface area for attraction. This has a lesser surface area. So therefore, this will have greater intermolecular, uh, intermolecular attraction, which means this will have a greater melting point and boiling point than the second one, okay? Now, next, let's talk about the solubility. Now, solubility is something which entirely depends upon the nature of the solute and the nature of the solvent. So, if a solute needs to be dissolved in any solvent, it has to come under some sort of interaction with the solvent, okay? So, there must be some interaction between the solute molecule and the solvent molecule. Then only the solute molecule is said to be soluble in that particular solvent, okay? Now, if you talk about haloalkanes, as we already discussed that haloalkane molecule is polar molecule. Why? Because of this CX bond. So, any haloalkane molecule is a polar molecule. Now, in case of polar compound, the intermolecular force that exists between them is dipole-dipole interaction. Now, say this is one haloalkane molecule, which is a polar molecule, and this is another haloalkane molecule. Now, the opposite end of these charges, positive charge and negative charge, will face each other in this manner, okay? Now, this type of attraction, this sort of attraction that existing, that is existing between the positive end of one molecule and the negative end of another molecule is known as dipole-dipole interaction. Now, in any compound, there is van der Waal attraction. But in haloalkanes, what happens? In addition to the dispersion forces, dispersion forces, there is also some dipole-dipole interaction. Okay, now there is uh, another thing that any organic compound dissolves in an organic solvent, an inorganic compound dissolves in inorganic solvent. Now, haloalkane molecule being organic, they are organic in nature. That is why a haloalkane molecule will be dissolved in organic solvent. Now, organic solvent. Let's take some examples, alcohols, ethers, chloroform, these are the examples of organic solvent, okay? So all the haloalkane molecules like methyl fluoride, bromide, iodide, they will be completely soluble in alcohols, ethers and chloroforms, all of these organic solvent. But if you talk about the solubility of haloalkanes in water, haloalkane molecule is almost insoluble in water. Why? Because there is almost no any interaction between the haloalkane molecule and water molecule. Water molecule is an inorganic solvent, okay? This is an inorganic solvent, but haloalkane is an organic molecule. So because of the dissimilarity between these solute molecule and the solvent molecule, haloalkane molecule will be entirely insoluble in water. And the other reason is haloalkane molecule cannot form hydrogen bond with water molecule. So there is no any intermolecular hydrogen bonding existing between the solute and the solvent molecule which makes the haloalkane molecule insoluble in water. But haloalkanes are soluble in organic solvent, okay? Okay, so this is all about physical properties of haloalkanes. Now, we shall discuss the chemical properties of haloalkanes, okay? Now, by chemical properties, we actually mean the chemical reactions shown by any compound, okay? So, we'll be discussing the chemical reactions shown by haloalkanes in detail. Now, before that, let's quickly see what are the reactions that haloalkanes shows. The number one reaction haloalkane shows is nucleophilic substitution reaction. Nucleophilic substitution reaction. The second one is elimination reaction. The third one is reaction with metals. The fourth one is reduction reactions. So, these are the four type of reaction shown by haloalkane molecule. First, 
we'll discuss the nucleophilic substitution reaction okay so before discussing the nucleophilic substitution reaction let's uh, understand some basic parameters that will be included in this topic okay so if we uh, try to understand any organic reaction any organic reaction actually consists of the organic molecule now this is our haloalkane molecule now the organic molecule or the haloalkane molecule in this case will be named as the substrate molecule so we'll call a substrate molecule okay this haloalkane molecule will be known as a substrate molecule now since there is this reaction is a nucleophilic substitution reaction there will be a nucleophile okay in class 11 we learned about different uh, reagent and one of them was nucleophile now what is a nucleophile any atom or molecule or any species that has some negative charge or that is rich in electrons or uh, let's say uh, it will have some extra electron okay for example the examples of nucleophile OH minus ion this is hydroxyl ion cyanide ion CN minus ion ammonia NH3 nitrite ion NO2 minus this is alkoxide and RO minus. So all these are examples of nucleophiles. There are two types of nucleophile. One is neutral, the other one is negatively charged. Whatever may be the nature of the nucleophile, but the nucleophile is always rich in electrons. Okay. Now, this is our substrate molecule. The nucleophile will react with the substrate molecule to form the products. Okay. So what the nucleophile does, it, it will try to approach the substrate molecule and it will try to form a new bond with this carbon atom or we can say the nucleophile will go and attack this carbon atom okay now the product will be this one so what the nucleophile does it, it will strike the carbon atom and this CAX bond will get broken so therefore we'll get one X minus ion over here okay now this is our product and this X minus is known as living group so uh, any organic reaction consists of a nucleophile that will react with the substrate it will form the products and one byproduct that is living group will depart from the molecule haloalkane okay now this cx bond will decide the rate of the reaction the speed of the reaction or the ease with which the reaction occurs we all know that uh, this CX bond are of various types fluorides C, uh, in fluoride there is a CF bond in chloride there is a CCL bond CBR bond and CI bond we already discussed that the CF bond is the strongest the CAI bond is the weakest okay so therefore this CF bond being the strongest all alkyl fluorides will react slowly with the nucleophile and alkyl iodides or iodoalkane will react faster with the nucleophile so therefore the reactivity order will be somewhat like this RF RCL RBR then RI so this is the reactivity order of any iodo uh, so, sorry haloalkanes okay now this reaction will also depend upon the nature of the nucleophile because all these nucleophile I've taken uh, your examples few examples all these nucleophile are not of the same nature some will react faster some will react slower so there are two things one is the nature of the substrate the other one is the nature of the nucleophile these are the two factors that will decide how speed or how fast the reaction will occur okay now let's discuss all the reactions that are being shown by haloalkane now depending upon the nature of the reactant and depending upon the nature of the nucleophile we'll get different products when a haloalkane molecule react with those react reactants okay number one is the reaction with aqueous NaOH or aqueous QH so aqueous sodium hydroxide or aqueous potassium hydroxide is our reagent the product form in this case is alcohol so whenever an uh, haloalkane molecule reacts with aqueous NaOH or aqueous KOH what this reagent will do is it will release one OH minus ion and this OH minus ion will act as the nucleophile and it will replace the halogen atom in the haloalkane molecule and the product will be alcohol for example CH3 via methyl bromide plus aqueous NaOH is the reagent so what will be the product this OH will replace this BR so CH3 OH is the product plus NaBr is the byproduct okay now actually 
there is only this OH minus ion that will have a role in this reaction because any uh, plus ion will have no any influence of the uh, on this reaction okay so in short we can write this reaction as CH3Br plus OH minus ion gives CH3OH plus Br minus ion. This is our substrate molecule. This is our nucleophile. This is the product alcohol and Br minus ion is our living group. Okay. So this is the first reaction. Alloalkene plus aqueous NOH or KOH will give alcohol. Number two reaction, second reaction is reaction with potassium cyanide, KCN. Now potassium cyanide will release the nucleophile CN minus N. So what is the nucleophile in this case? CN minus N. So therefore this CN minus N will again replace one of the halogen atom and the product formed will be called as alkyl cyanides. For example, CH3Br, again CH3Br plus KCN. Now in this case the solvent will be ethanol, okay? So this CN minus N will replace Br. So CH3, CN plus KBR is the reaction. Now this is named as methyl cyanide, okay? So therefore what is the product? Cyanides, alkyl cyanide. Now the IUPAC name will be different. This is also known as methane nitrine or the general name is methyl cyanide, okay? The third reaction, number three, is the reaction with silver cyanide. Now before this we took the reagent as KCN. KCN was the reagent, in this case AGCN is the reagent. Now in both the case, the nucleophile is the same, okay? The nucleophile is actually CN minus and the structure of CN minus is this one. Now if we look this molecule, this uh, nucleophile carefully then we have negative charge on this carbon atom and also a lone pair of electron on this nitrogen atom. So this nucleophile will this nucleophile can attack the substrate molecule that is haloalkane from carbon side from carbon end as well as this nitrogen end so if any nucleophile has two attacking sites two donor sites those type of nucleophile is known as ambident nucleophile so cn minus ion is ambident nucleophile now in the earlier case with kcn with kcn the product was alkyl cyanide so therefore the carbon end was attacking the CX bond, okay? I mean the haloalkane molecule. So that is why we got uh, alkyl cyanide as the major product. In this case, the product will be different. The product will be alkyl isocyanide. Alkyl isocyanide. That is, now in this case, the nucleophile will attack the haloalkane molecule from nitrogen end, okay? C2H5Br ethyl bromide plus AgCN C2H5 NC is the product and AgBr is the byproduct and this is known as ethyl isocyanide so ethyl isocyanide or ethane isonitrile is the main product okay so two different products we are getting why because this CN nucleophile cyanide nucleophile is an ambient nucleophile it will lead to formation of two different products okay the fourth reaction is the reaction with sodium or potassium alkoxide now we can write the formula as like this NaOr this is sodium alkoxide or potassium alkoxide the formula will be KOR okay so let's see what happens when alloy alkanes react with this reagent the product in this case will be ether so what is the product the product we get in this case is ether for example ch3 br plus naoch3 now what is r r is a methyl group so this is named as sodium methoxide methyl bromide plus sodium methoxide we'll get CH3O, CH3 plus NABR. Now this CH3O, CH3 is named as dimethyl ether, okay? This is dimethyl ether, or this is also known as methoxymethane. The IUPAC name is methoxymethane. Okay, so what is the product? Ether is the main product. 
Now this reaction has a name. The name is Williamson's synthesis of ether. This reaction is known as Williamson's synthesis of ether. Okay. Okay. The next reaction, number five, is the reaction with Ag NO2. So what we are doing is we are trying to bring NO2 group instead of halogen atom. Okay. And the product formed will be nitroalkanes. So the product is named as nitro alkenes. Okay, what is the reagent? Silver nitrite, AgNO2. Okay, for example, CH3Br again plus AgNO2 will give us CH3NO2 plus AgBr. So what is the name? This is nitromethane. Nitromethane. Okay, the next reaction is somewhat similar, but the reaction is with KNO2 or NaNO2. So with sodium nitrate or potassium, sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate, again we'll get the nucleophile is again the same, NO2 minus, nitrate ion. Now this is again an ambient nucleophile, NO2 minus, because this has again two donor side, okay? One is oxygen atom, the other one is nitrogen atom. So this nucleophile has the ability to attack the haloalkane molecule from either end, either from oxygen end or from nitrogen end. As a result, we'll be getting two different products. One is a nitroalkane. In this case, the product will be alkyl nitrites. So what is the product? Alkyl nitrite. Let's take an example again. C2H5I, iodoethane or ethyl iodide plus AgNO2. The product is C2H5NO2 comes in place of iodine, C2H5NO2. So what is the other product? AgI, silver iodide. And this is known as ethyl nitrite. The product is ethyl nitrite. Okay, the next reaction is the reaction with silver salt of any carboxylic acid that is RCWAG okay silver salt of any carboxylic acid the product in this case is esters so some ester is produced in this case the, the, the nucleophile in this case is RCWO minus so what is the nucleophile RCWO minus this nucleophile will replace again the halogen atom from any alkyl molecule let's take an example CH3Br plus CH3COOAG. Okay, this is methyl acetate. What is the product? This whole ion, CH3COOAG, and acetate ion will replace Br. So what is the product? CH3COOCH3 plus AgBr. This is known as methyl acetate, which is an ester, okay? This is an ester, methyl acetate. Next reaction is the reaction with ammonia. This reaction is also known as a ammonolysis reaction, or this is also known as Hoffman ammonolysis reaction after the name of the chemist Hoffman. Okay, Hoffman ammonolysis reaction. Now, in this case, the product is not a single one. So we get actually the mixture of different products, okay? And those mixtures are actually amines. So we get a mixture of one degree amine, two degree amine, three degree amine, and so on. For example, CH3I plus NH3. So methyl iodide plus ammonia. So therefore CH3NH2 is the product. What is the other product? I'm not writing the other product. The other product will be HI, okay? So CH3NH2 is the main product. Now, this is one degree amine. And the name is methanamine. The name is methanamine or methyl amine. Now, how to know the degree of amine is actually, if the nitrogen atom is attached to one carbon atom, then it is known as one degree amine. If the nitrogen atom is attached to two carbon atoms, it is known as two degree amine and so on. So this is one degree amine. Why? Because the nitrogen atom is attached to a single carbon atom. Now what happens in this case is the product one degree amine will further react with this CH3I. Okay? 
So CH3 I. The reaction will be again the CH3 NH. CH3 NH will replace iodine atom. So instead of iodine, we'll have CH3 NH. So there is one CH3 already in this molecule. So the product will be CH3 whole 2 NH, which is a 2 degree amine. This is a 2 degree amine. Now this will further react with another CH3I. Again this hydrogen gets replaced or CH3 whole 2 N will replace iodine atom. So we'll get CH3 whole 3 N which is a 3 degree amine. This is known as trimethylamine. Finally this 3 degree amine will further react with CH3 I. Okay. Now what happens this lone pair of electron will get replaced by this CH3 radical. So we'll get CH3 all for n plus i minus so we'll, we'll get an ionic compound in this case and this is known as four degree or quaternary ammonium salt okay so what are the number of products there are four products in this case and all these four products are known as amines and this is reaction this reaction is known as Hoffman ammonolysis reaction okay okay the next reaction is eternal number nine reaction the next reaction is uh, with sodium alkynide okay sodium alkynide now this alkynide is actually originated from an alkyne molecule so the reagent generally in this case is sodium acetylide which is na c triple bond ch we'll write in this way na c triple bond ch so what is the nucleophile out here the negatively charged species that is C triple bond CH minus this, this is known as acetylide ion this acetylide ion will act as the nucleophile and it will replace the halogen atom C2H5 Br okay let's write in this way CH3 CH2 Br plus CH triple bond CNA sodium acetylide so this acetylide ion will replace Br. So the product will be CH3, CH2, C triple bond CH. So what is the product? Some alkyne. Actually some higher alkyne will be the product. What we are starting is with this one. This alkyne has two carbon atom. But in the product there are four carbon atoms. And where these two carbon atoms are coming from? It is coming from this substrate molecule. Okay. Now this is a very important reaction and it will be used in other chapters later on okay okay so that was all about the reactions that are being shown by haloalkanes okay now those reactions they were different reactions and in all those reactions there was the substrate molecule that was reacting with the nucleophile now any organic reaction will have some process of its own to occur okay and that detailed process that detailed pathway or detailed course of the reaction is known as mechanism of the reaction so before studying actually the uh, before knowing the reaction shown by some organic compounds we need to know the mechanism of the reaction and what reaction did we learn is nucleophilic substitution reaction so let's quickly see the mechanism of nucleophilic substitution reaction okay so mechanism of nucleophilic substitution reaction now nucleophilic substitution reaction is generally of two types one is substitution nucleophilic bimolecular and that will be written in short as SN2 reaction substitution nucleophilic bimolecular this is the first type of nucleophilic substitution reaction the other one is SN1 reaction so SN2 reaction and SN1 reaction are the two types of nucleophilic substitution reaction now we'll discuss the mechanism of these two reactions in detail okay now first of all let's discuss the mechanism of SN2 reaction now what is the SN2 what is an SN2 reaction any reaction that is taking place by SN2 mechanism is known as SN2 reaction now what is the SN2 mechanism now in every case the nucleophile is reacting with the substrate molecule okay let's again write the general term general reaction that I wrote earlier this is the nucleophile this is the halogen atom nucleophile will attack this carbon atom so what uh, what's happening is this CNU bond the a new CNU bond is being formed and this CX bond will get broken now this is the product 
plus we have x minus over here okay now this new bond the formation of new bond and the breaking of the old bond decides whether the reaction occurs by SN2 mechanism or SN1 mechanism. Now in SN2 reaction what happens is the reaction, the whole reaction will take place in a single step. Okay, so this is a single step reaction. This is a single step reaction. I hope you are noting down. This is a single step reaction. And in this reaction, what happens is the nucleophile comes and approaches the haloalkane molecule from the back side or the side opposite to the halogen atom. The halogen atom is on the right side in the blackboard and the nucleophile is on the left side. So therefore the nucleophile will attack this carbon atom from the side opposite to the halogen atom. So this is what happens in SN2 reaction, okay? The reaction is a single step reaction. The whole reaction of course in a single step. The nucleophile will try and attack the whole molecule from the opposite end to the halogen atom. Now we'll get this one first so a new cnu bond is being formed this is cnu bond and this is cx bond okay so a new cnu bond is being formed this is a negatively charged nucleophile even this is negatively charged halogen atom and this is known as transition state now what is this this is transition state now this is some spaces that is being formed during the reaction for a very short period of time say fraction of second so this way this is very much unstable and it will ultimately lead to the formation of product now in product there is a new cnu bond the cx bond will get broken so this is product and the leaving group is x minus okay so this is an SN2 reaction, a general mechanism for SN2 reaction. Let's see an example. CH3 Br plus aqueous NaOH. What is the product? CH3OH plus NaBr. Okay, we have discussed this reaction uh, earlier. CH3OH methanol is the product plus NaBr is the byproduct. Now this is an SN2 reaction. This reaction takes place by SN2 mechanism. It is a single step reaction. The nucleophile Br minus ion will attack, sorry, the nucleophile OH minus ion will attack the carbon atom and it will lead to the formation of CH3OH. Okay. So what are the groups attached in this case? Three hydrogen and one bromine. I'm drawing this in this manner. This is two hydrogen. This is one hydrogen. Okay, this type of formula, this type of structure is known as wage formula. Okay, wage formula. These two bones are on the plane of the blackboard. This CH bond is pointing downward below the plane of the blackboard and this CH bond is pointing upward that is it is pointing above the plane of the blackboard okay the nucleophile will try to attack this molecule from the back side that is from this side okay now the transition state is this one this is our transition state the CBR bond gets broken and the CNU bond gets formed the product will be This one, CH, there is another CH, CH3, NU. Okay, actually the nucleophile in this case is OH minus, okay? So what will be in play uh, instead of NU? OH minus ion, this is OH. So this is the mechanism of SN2 reaction. Now let's see the mechanism of SN1 reaction. Okay, now before uh, discussing SN1 uh, reaction, Let's write an expression for this reaction, SN2 reaction. The expression will be the expression for rate of the reaction. Now, what is the rate of a reaction? The rate of a reaction is actually the speed or the velocity of the reaction. So, by rate of a reaction, we mean how fast or how slow a reaction is occurring, okay? And the rate of the reaction will be proportional to the concentration of the substrate and the concentration of 
the nucleophile as well. So the whole rate of the reaction will depend upon the concentration of the substrate as well as the concentration of the nucleophile. Now what we see is in the rate expression there are two spaces. One is substrate itself and the other one is nucleophile. And in any reaction, if the rate expression, if the rate expression consists of two spaces, then that type of reaction is known as bimolecular reaction. So where is that two coming from? Where is what does this two stands? This two stands for bimolecular. Why bimolecular? Because there are two different spaces included in the rate expression. So this is a rate expression for SN2 reaction. Okay. Okay, uh, so what happens in SN2 reaction? SN2 reaction is a one step reaction, single step reaction and it is a bimolecular reaction. Okay, so there are two reactant species that is involved in the whole reaction. That is the rate of the reaction is determined by the substrate molecule as well as the nucleophile. Now next is, let's see the mechanism of SN1 reaction. Now SN1 mechanism is a two step mechanism. So what, what is the SN1 reaction? First of all, SN1 reaction are those reactions which takes place by this mechanism. SN1 mechanism so SN1 mechanism occurs by two step in the first step in the first step a carbocation is formed so what happens in the first step in the first step the CX bond gets broken the CX bond gets broken and it will result in the formation of a carbocation okay in the second step there is the attack of nucleophile so in the second step there is nucleophilic attack nucleophilic attack on the carbocation so the carbocation will be attacked by the nucleophile okay let's take an example of an SN1 reaction CH3 whole 3 CBr this is named as tertiary butyl bromide this is tertiary butyl bromide on reaction with aqueous NaOH this will also produce alcohol CH3C whole 3 CWH uh, COH then NABR this is tertiary butyl alcohol okay now this reaction is an SN1 reaction and it will take place by SN1 mechanism so let's see in the first step this CH3 whole 3 I'm writing in this way again in the wage formula CH3 whole 3 CBR this is the first step this first step is actually the slow step now the maximum time taken for this reaction will be taken by the first step say almost 99% of the time will be taken by the first step now in the first step the CBR bond gets gradually broken it will take some time so it is a slow step and this step is also known as rate determining step RDS means rate determining step so this CBR bond gets broken and a carbocation is formed so this is the carbocation plus BR minus now this carbocation as we learned in class 11 is a very unstable type of species this is a 3 degree carbocation if you remember we learned this already in class 11 this is a 3 degree carbocation okay now this carbocation actually all of the carbocation are unstable in nature so it will immediately react with the nucleophile in the second step what is the nucleophile OH minus ion was the nucleophile CH3 whole 3 C plus so OH minus ion attacks the carbocation and it will result in the formation of tertiary butyl alcohol this is tertiary butyl alcohol which is a 3 degree alcohol okay so this is the mechanism of SN1 reaction so it is a two step reaction in the first step a carbocation is being formed and in the second step the nucleophilic attack occurs okay now how do we know whether a reaction is SN1 reaction or an SN2 reaction? Now this is generally known by the nature of the substrate. One is by the nature of the substrate. The other one is also by the nature of the nucleophile and the nature of the solvent. Actually the main thing, the main factor that decides whether a reaction is SN1 or SN2 is the nature of the substrate. Now by substrate we mean the haloalkane molecule in this case. Okay. Now haloalkane molecule, the CH3X type of haloalkane molecule is known as methyl halide. So this is our methyl halide. Then next 
is this is a one degree halide this is one degree alkene one degree alkene this is a two degree halkene okay this is a two degree halkene then this is a three degree alkene so how do we assign different degrees to this alloy alkene we'll see the carbon atom now this carbon atom isn't attached to any of other carbon atoms okay so this comes under the category of methyl halide now look at this carbon atom this is being attached to another carbon atom so if any carbon atom is attached to other carbon atom one other carbon atom it is known as one degree carbon atom so this carbon atom is one degree carbon atom and this halogen atom is attached to one degree carbon atom so that is why this is one degree or primary halo alkene this is two degree carbon atom because it is attached to two different carbon atoms two carbon atoms so that is why it is a secondary or two degree halo alkene okay and this is a three degree halo alkene now this halo alkene molecule will undergo sn1 or sn2 reaction will be decided by the nature of these compounds the nature of this halo alkene now what the nucleophile was doing it was attacking this carbon atom okay then this this cx bond gets broken now the nucleophile will try and approach the molecule will try and approach the substrate molecule from that area from that region where it gets maximum space so the nucleophile actually loves the space to attack the carbon atom okay now there are three hydrogen atom on this carbon atom here there are two hydrogen atoms and one bigger larger or bulkier alkyl group there are two bulkier groups in this case and there are three uh, alkyl group in this case now the nucleophile can come and easily now okay first let us discuss sn2 reaction what happens in sn2 reaction is it is a single step reaction okay now in the single step reaction the nucleophile was attacking the carbon atom from the back side now let's compare all these structures among these structures the nucleophile will attack this carbon atom with the greatest ease the nucleophile doesn't get any space doesn't get any free space to attack this carbon atom because it is already covered by these three alkyl groups this type of molecule is known as sterically hindered molecule okay this is a sterically crowded or sterically hindered molecule even this is a sterically hindered molecule because there are two bigger alkyl groups so what happens the sn2 reaction is shown by those molecules which has more space that is methyl halide will undergo sn2 reaction with the fastest and the easiest way so this is the order for sn2 to reaction this is the order for sn2 reaction this is sn2 reactivity order okay methyl halide 1 degree alloy alkene 2 degree alkyl halide then 3 degree alkyl halide now the sn1 mechanism will follow the reverse order now for sn1 reaction what happened in the first step is the formation of carbocation and as we know here this cx bond will get, get broken and it will result in the formation of 3 degree carbocation here 2 degree carbocation will be formed methyl carbocation then 1 degree carbocation and um, among all these carbocations we have already learned in class 11 that the 3 degree carbocation is the more stable one is the most stable one in fact so that is why this 3 degree halo alkene will show sn1 reaction with the most ease okay so therefore the sn1 order will be the reverse one okay sn1 order will be the reverse one 3 degree alkyl halide will react more easily or more faster by sn1 mechanism 2 degree 1 degree then methyl halide so this is the order for sn1 reactivity okay sn1 reaction now the sn1 reaction is also influenced by another factor and that is the nature of the solvent now there are many solvent of which this type of solvent which is named as a polar protic solvent polar protic solvent what this solvent does is it will favor the formation of a carbocation and it will favor sn1 reaction so polar protic solvent for example ch3 
OH methano. This is a polar protic solvent. Actually, polar protic solvent are those solvent which contains a hydrogen atom that is attached to oxygen atom. So, methanol is a polar protic solvent. In fact, any alcohol is a polar protic solvent. For example, another example is also water. Okay. So, if there are these sorts of solvent like methanol or water, then the reaction is possibly occurring by SN1 mechanism. Okay. So, this is all about the mechanism of nucleophilic substitution reaction. SN1 mechanism and then SN2 mechanism. So, there are also some few reactions which haloalkane shows. So, uh, those will be discussed in the next class. Okay. So, this much for today. Thank you.